I'll start by saying uh, parents experience the child protection system in pretty much all studies as being very difficult, very challenging, very oppressive. I don't think that's necessarily social workers' fault, but they're very busy, they've got very high caseloads. Um, often there's a lot of newly qualified social workers with managers who aren't that experienced. And the whole setup of having what we call the child protection conference where you have a group of professionals sat around a table and the parent there, it can feel very oppressive and judgmental. And essentially during the meeting, they have a vote as to whether the child's at risk of significant harm. And they also have to decide whether the, uh, which category they're under. Is it sexual abuse? Is it physical abuse? Is it neglect? Is it emotional abuse? So that whole process you can imagine is extremely difficult for parents. Now with peer advocacy, what you have is a someone who's been through the child protection system themselves, maybe a couple of years, five years, 10 years, um, they've come through it, they've worked things through, you know, they're no longer in a, in a crisis, say, and they get some training and supervision and they go and support a parent who's currently going through that process. And that, I think, can be really powerful for a number of reasons. Firstly, it helps redress the balance a little bit. So they don't just go to the child protection conference, they'll meet with the parent before the meeting, they'll meet them after the meeting, they'll carry on hopefully throughout the whole process. If the child becomes subject to a child protection plan, they'll carry on supporting them throughout the process, which can be a very stressful process because of course, parents in those circumstances are very worried, understandably, that their children are gonna be removed. And of course, a certain proportion of those children are removed. So it's a very emotional, difficult time for parents and have that person next to them who's clearly on their side, who has been through it and, and, and come through the other side and is clearly flourishing, well, that shows them a bit of hope. They can see that someone else has come through the other side and managed to, to, to be doing an important job. It's also very helpful for, um, for the peer advocate because they're then doing something meaningful, something important. They can use their expertise and that, of course, they have training and supervision to help someone else who's going through them. So it can be very good also for their self-esteem and self-worth and help continue their sort of recovery, if you like. I guess the other element to it is um, some local authorities, particularly in Wales, they're looking at a more professional advocacy model. So the advocates who are supporting parents in child protection conferences are, aren't, haven't been through the child protection system themselves. What they've done is they've had training in advocacy, they may have done a certificate in advocacy, they may have done advocacy for children before because that's been going much longer in this country. And that is, in my view, definitely better than nothing because it's still someone who in theory at least is on the parent's side and they're advocating for them. But I don't feel, and our research in Camden and other studies in the state suggests that it's not as powerful as a peer advocate because it's not someone who's been through it. It doesn't fundamentally redress the balance. It's another professional. So if you've got 10 professionals around the room, if you've got someone else who's a peer advocate, it's slightly redressing the balance. You've got two people who've been there, who've experienced it. Now there are certain risks our research has highlighted associated with the peer, uh, peer parental advocacy model, but there are things that in Camden they've done to mitigate this. So it is really important that the peer parental advocate, um, because they've often, they've obviously had to have been in quite a lot of crisis to get to the point where their children are potentially going to be removed and subject to a child protection plan themselves. Um, it's really important they've worked through some of those issues. So there's something about the recruitment of the peer um, advocates that's really important to make sure they're in a position they've worked through their issues in, in whatever way you know, has worked for them. The other thing is that it's really important that they get the supervision and the support they need to be able to do this really important role. It's a very difficult role because you're in a balance. You're trying to balance um, the needs of, of keeping, of, of, um, uh, hoping to give the parent a voice, but you probably don't want to challenge the social worker too much. You don't want it to get very adversarial. But you know, this child protection process is very difficult. There's lots of complex terminology lots of difficult language, lots of very formal meetings, lots of fear, lots of shame. Social workers often inexperienced and quite fearful and overwhelmed themselves. So it is really important that peer advocacy does become more widespread. I think one final thing I'll say is that in Camden, I think it's wor worked really well because Tim and Becca and other people have really bought into this idea of involving families in decision making, involving parents, involving young people, at strategic level and they've done a lot of work around that. In other local authorities, we're hoping to get funding to do studies where we are in Wales and hoping to get further uh, funding in England to do studies. 
Um, it will be interesting to see if it's so impactful and has, has a big positive impact where they haven't got that long-term culture of involving parents in decision-making. And we're, we're hoping to find that out over the next year or two. But I think from the year-long evaluation we've done in Camden, it's really positive. It's really making a difference. You know, parents feel heard. We, we did a focus group and interview with a group of parents. They couldn't believe that in other local authorities they didn't get offered this service. So I think it is really positive, can make a real difference. I think the other thing important to, to recognize is um, parents often told us that when they had the advocate, it actually made a big difference in how social workers treated them. You know, they weren't so dismissive, they weren't just telling them what to do. Social workers can very much get into a mode of just telling a parent, do this, do that, go on that course, like we've heard at the conference today. And that reduces a lot if they've got an advocate. So I think it can really improve things, probably for everyone. Social workers have mixed views of it. Some social workers really welcome it and, and acknowledge that it's really positive for, for parents to have a strong voice. Other social workers are a bit anxious, I think, whether they fully admit it or not, but that some of them have about um, you know, giving some of the power to the parents. I think one really important thing which we've started to uncover and we need to look at the data again is, is the importance of the peer advocate being involved at an early stage. If it's like there's already been a child protection conference, the relationship between the parent and the social worker is already very difficult, it's not that it's too late, it's better than nothing, but I would really like peer advocates to be involved from a very early stage. So children in need, even early help, parents be offered that because it is really scary. And, and just having someone alongside you explain, there's so much jargon, there's so much complexity. I remember talking to a group of newly qualified social workers four or five years ago, and they were saying they found child protection conferences scary and worrying. So you can just imagine what it's like for a parent at, the, at that sort of level. And I used to chair child protection conferences going back 10 years in, lo in two local authorities down in the southwest. And parents would often come at the beginning of the meeting, they'd meet me for 10 or 15 minutes, and they'd be like, are you going to remove my children today? Are you a judge? So it's very scary for them. So having this person sitting next to them from an early stage in the process, I think can be really transformative. And I think one really hopeful thing that we, we have seen in some of the data is then it, it, it the, the, the parents have a better understanding of the process, they understand the jargon, they hopefully and they do have a better relationship with the social worker, it's less, you know, it's less emotive, it's less difficult. The, 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 we had a great quote from one of the peer advocates talking about how they act as a bridge between the parent and the social worker. And then hopefully the, the, the parent, rather than being scared and making some surface level changes or cursory level changes because they're so fearful and scared, they're able to tell the social worker through the advocate or alongside the advocate what they're really worried about, what they might be struggling with and get the support they need. And it's much less of an authoritarian process where they're just being told, do this, do that, and more in working in partnership.